You are now listening to the greatest show in the universe. Hey man, this is Tommy Chong. And right now you're listening to the Anthony Rogers Show. Hey, this is Jordan Belfort, the real Wolf of Wall Street. And you're listening to the Anthony Rogers Show. The Anthony Rogers Show. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Sean Danielson from Smile Empty Soul, and you are listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. The Anthony Rogers Show. Brian Bader from the Verb Pipe here, and you're listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. Hey, this is James Jude Courtney, Michael Myers, aka The Shape, and Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, and the soon to be released Halloween Ends. And this is The Anthony Rogers Show. I am Dave Holmes from MTV and Esquire Magazine, and you are listening. To the Anthony Rogers Show. What's up, everybody? WWE Hall of Famer, the Godfather, and cannabis expert, <laughs> and connoisseur. And you're watching the Anthony Rogers Show. Peace. This holiday season, you're going to want to smell like luxurious bastard beard co. You either want to wear them as a man or smell them as a woman. So buy them as a man or buy them for your man. Don't smell like a bum this holiday. Do it right. With Luxurious Bastard Beard Company, use promo code LEGENDARY for a discount. All right, what's up? I think you guys' audio is off. Uh, I think uh, I think you're right about his. All right, there you go. I can hear you. Yeah. Is that better? All right, cool. I can hear you now. Oh, cool. Hey, sorry, I was saying that was the longest intro of all time. I'm sorry you guys had to sit through that. I was, uh, it was like, a, it was like a half hour intro. I was like, oh my God, I just want to get to this podcast instead of waiting. But, um, thank you guys for going backwards in your career and being here. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Thanks for, thanks for having us out, man. Yeah, good to be here. It's awesome, man. So um, we should play your trailer first, probably. I don't know. I think it's kind of crazy. Have yeah, you seen we- it? Have you seen it yet? Oh, have I seen it? Yeah. Yeah, I saw it uh, a few times, actually. They, I saw it at the festival in L.A. It was the Hollywood uh, Independent Film Festival. And I uh, saw it there for the first time, like, in a theater. It was kind of weird awesome. seeing myself on screen, like a big <laughs> theater. So I saw it there. And then saw it uh, two more times in Chicago because we did, a, like, a grand opening uh, release in like Park Ridge, uh, the called the Pickwick Theater, and so I saw it twice there because me and Doug and a couple other actors in the cast we did like a Q and A after the screening. So we went Friday, Saturday, sold it out. Uh, a lot of Doug's fans were there. They got you know they had the suits and everything, and uh, you know they packed it out. And so yeah, saw it three times. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's a good story. <laughs> that's cool, man. Like. But yeah, I'll pull up the trailer. I had this on um I had this on a former episode and like it was like on this like premise I had was like rock stars telling ghost stories, which I thought was like awesome having all these rock stars telling ghost stories. And then my friends were like, Hey man, that trailer in the beginning was really awesome. <laughs> like I'm just like I thought I had like this great premise, and they're like, and they're like Man, that the movie trailer in the beginning was like really good, dude. Like <laughs> I heard that at least like five times from my buddies, just like telling me that was a cool that was they looked cool. Good man, awesome, dude. Rockstar song "Ghost Stories" does sound cool, though. Actually, I, I thought it was. I thought it was a good premise. They, they liked your trailer more somehow. I don't know. So good, so good job, dude. Like apparently the trailer is cooler than that. So, 
<laughs> Thanks, respect. man. Yeah, they, they did a pretty good job with the trailer also. Like, specifically, I remember when the trailer came out, like, oh, this, all right, this came out good. And, and so, yeah, well, we, we were happy with how it came out. Can we have pull it up? Uh, Headliner, he's been doing it for over 30 years. Please welcome the road dog, Jimmy Quinn. My name is Jimmy, and I'm an alcoholic. How are you feeling, Jimmy? You look a little worn out. I'm a road comic. I am worn out. Go away. I'm not the maid. I'm your son. Can I take it to lunch? Give me a minute. Tell somebody sorry. I'm sure I'm not what you expected. You're exactly what I expected. I actually want to be a comedian. Maybe it's genetic. I just dropped out of med school. Hold your applause. It's funny. Let's say we uh, spend a little bit more time together. We'll have some goofs. I'm afraid you won't be receiving any money, but I will pray for you. <laughs> you got a nice kid there. Certainly thinks highly of you. Uh, he doesn't know me that well, Phil. I'm a little nervous, because uh, you know what you did to your last headlining act. <laughs> I've been booking Jimmy 20 years. The father's probably one of the funniest people I've met in my life, but he has no discipline. Comedy's about pain. It's like he doesn't even care. He's an addict. Until he decides he wants to do it for himself, there's nothing you or anyone else can do for him. How come he never made on TV? TV isn't real comedy. Real comedy's live, you know, in the moment. I go on that stage, I'm the talent, I'm the writer, I'm the director. If the customer doesn't like it, I tell the customer to go f Who is in the car? Oh, that's David. He's my son. Top that for a living. Remember me. How I made you laugh. Wow. Wow. That's right. amazing. That ending music was that Etsy, the director. Etsy wrote that. Uh, Greg Leanne, but you know, talented dude, man. The guy didn't meet the parents. Uh, um, you know, he then he directed a lot of films. He wrote the original Meet the Parents and Etsy and did it. And you know, he was the, the main guy. And then he, they let him direct, you know, uh, Relative Strangers. I think it was uh, uh, the Meet the Fockers, little fo like a couple of those films, like the Ben Stiller movies. Wow. So Greg's great, man. Yeah, it was a great. I thought that was uh, Frank Sinatra for a second. I mean, it would start <laughs> with a little bit of that vocal, but I was like, wow, that's cool that they got that. You know, yeah. I've never seen a movie or TV show that really got stand up right, you know, so I'm excited to see the movie. It's, it looks really cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we do get it right. I, I think we did, um, especially modern era, with everything's going on stand up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. But how do, how do you mean modern era? Everything that's going on. Yeah, it's like uh, a lot of clubs are closing now. It's it's just comedy. It's not what it, what it used to be. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but like, I'm not spoiling it. But it's like, uh, yeah, you know, you don't make as much money on the road. You know, it, it's more of a grind now. And so, you know, it, I guess in the 80s, everyone had this idea that, you know, comedy was this big glamour, you know, lifestyle. And it, we basically said, well, they're not anymore. Maybe it was for some guys. Yeah. But, you, know, you really have to. It's hard for most comics. You know, yeah. It's hard for most. I mean, I, I see them. I mean, I do open mics. I mean, Anthony, we so, me and you, we, we see the comics coming up. And these are miserable people. These aren't <laughs> big pop star celebrities. These these people have horrible lives. And so I thought we did a good job <laughs> in that regard. I thought, I thought we, you know, you make it real. You know, if you're going to do a movie about stand-up that's, you know, real, it, sh it should be a drama, really. Because people were surprised that it was a drama. It's like, oh, why is it a comedy? Because like, it's like, it's about a stand-up. It, it's going to be sad. Probably, unless it's, unless it's Kevin Hart or somebody, it's probably <laughs> going to be sad. So, yeah, well, there may be more more sad stories than happy ones, but you know, even for a road dog like that, I mean, I guess a movie called Road Dog, you know, pretty much gets it across. You know, it's not, you know, it's 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 not as if uh, he's he's made it to um, the movies and TV and stardom or whatever. You know, I mean, he's he's out there slugging away, but. You know, there there will always be a place for Ham and Eggers to do comedy, I think. But I, yeah, the venues certainly uh, 
don't pay, you know, relative. I mean, they there were there was a time when you could go out on the road as an MC, you know, and 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 <laughs> MC all over the country. That that's completely unheard of, and the feature spot is dying pretty quickly too as a touring thing. Yeah, I mean, I tour with a couple guys, and you know, every time I, I you know, it's easier for me to t- do feature on the road than it is at my home clubs because, like, oh, they're bringing the guy. Oh, uh, this guy's also bringing a guy. So, yeah, it's mm. tough now. And, like, they every show they want to pay you in drinks. It's like, well, <laughs> free drinks at the bar. It's like, just, just give me money. I just want money. I, I want money. <laughs> I need give some money, money, actually, yeah. Yeah. Keep the drinks in your gas tank. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like, I, I, I've seen that. I mean, the, you know, all these shows that the guys doing now, like, the bar scenes, it's like, it's tough. You know, that's kind of like Anthony was talking about this guy, uh, Jared Dog. And want you know guys like him are so impressive because that that's so hard to craft out a living doing that and not having like you know on TV or whatever you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Endorsements. I mean with, with online, I mean there's so many ways to make money with the internet too, like endorsements and like whatever else. I mean, I mean yeah, I mean I, I feel like with diesel, I, I think my comedy paid for my diesel fuel, you know, like the like the bus to get everywhere. Like you mean like like basically, but I think like the podcast and like and, you know, other things. I mean uh, like endorsement deals. I mean people pay to post on Instagram. It's how dumb the world is. You know what I mean? Like, I, you mean like literally just copy paste stuff and get paid for it instead of like I don't know farming and like having to like survive. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, yeah. like it got a lot easier in a lot of ways too. But I think like the club's almost the promotion route now. You know what I mean? To get in movies and whatever else and get in front of those people, and then you have to have like other sources. You have to like be weird. I mean, you have to think outside like outside the box. Now it's weird. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of lost ones too. You know, there's both. You know. Yeah, you do have to have something else now. It's like uh, there's a Hedberg joke. It's like even in the '90s, this was starting to happen to him. It's like, oh, you stand up? Uh, can you act? Can you do this for us? Can you, you know, do host a game show? It's like, yeah, like if you went to a chef, so, oh, you're a good chef. Can you farm? <laughs> <laughs> and even in Hedberg's time, like that was kind of that's it started happening then. So now yeah. you have to have, you know, you got to have a like a show and now like this, and, you, and it's like it's hard for a lot of standups because most standups are very lazy, and they just want to do comedy. They just want to do stand up. Well, unimaginative too, you know, and, and the acting thing is like, yeah, a compl- it's always been that way that if you are, if you do well enough as a stand up, they can't make any money off that really, you know, I mean, they can book you for live dates, but an agent or something like that, they, they want to get you in TV because that's where the money is and uh, acting and all that stuff. I mean, if, you know, the, I guess there was a time when you'd make a, li- you know, the, there's only a couple of guys who really made it to fame just doing stand up, like Brian Regan and, you know, a few others, but almost all of them ended up becoming, uh, you know, acting. You're supposed to get a sitcom. That was the whole, that was the real brass ring when I started to get a sitcom. But there's no gatekeepers now, gatekeepers now, which is nice. You can get on the internet and build an audience. You're kind of expected to do that. You know, there's nobody that can say no. Yeah. At, at the same time, though, it's like, yeah, you know, there's still gatekeepers to, to get forward. Well, now the gatekeepers are algorithm people whatever that is i hear all these guys they go oh i gotta post uh on mondays because that's the algorithm likes i was like what do you mean what it likes is it a lot is it a person what oh i gotta it's like it's like the new god it's like oh the algorithm i just want to help the algorithm i don't want to do anything too edgy because the algorithm's gonna flag me and i'm not gonna get as many views because the algorithm is not gonna like that like is this a, a thinking person what do you mean the algorithm doesn't like it i thought isn't it just the computer so now it's all just like algorithm stuff now. So the, the gatekeepers yeah. are algorithms, and the gatekeepers they're still gatekeepers, but it's like now the gatekeeper, like like what you said, they expect you to have a hundred thousand followers. It used to be, oh, you're funny. I'll book, yeah. I'll book you the headline this weekend. Now it's funny. <laughs> yeah, you're funny. Oh, but do you also have a million followers? And they're like, no. Is like, all right? Well, Addison Ray does, so we're gonna have her headline instead. You know, so, yeah, more if you fill the club, the, you know, the are you funny part kind of gets thrown out the window. It's not really important. Yeah. yeah. I, I know, like, there's like TikTokers now that are just going on the road and like they like they don't even do stand up. I'm like, I'm doing a tour. And I'm like, what's the tour? And they're like, you know, we're going to meet people. We're going to get on stage. We're going to figure it out after that. that that's, that's a good show. <laughs> that's what's happening right now. And so, and you got these guys, you know, that me and Anthony have come up with like, doing 
what was the place we did? The 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 pizza shop that was like a, abandoned. Cusumano's pizza, man. Yeah, yeah. Cusumano's pizza. It's not even. It's not even on Google Maps. If you, if you Google it, like for the the promo, they had to put the address. Like you had to type in the numbers in the street. You do. You do. To that's find it, you, you can't awesome. even do the name, and, and that's where we did stand up. And like, we you know, we came up that way. I love that place, I still love that place. Well, you got to enter the latitude, the line oh, in order to find it. <laughs> yeah, you had the map, they had the points, like, yeah, where it was Damn. on the earth, and yeah, it was that Chris Miles pizza, man, no pizza. <laughs> like, you can't even order pizza there, it just has like a bunch of drinks, or you can't even, like, you can't even get a pizza there at all. <laughs> it's still open, you're not just going into an abandoned building or something and doing a show because that's next, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think it, it was abandoned, right? Because when they were selling alcohol, wasn't that technically illegal? No, I think it was a real place. He's a 3M like license. I know Nick, but but no, it's like, uh, it just looks, it just looks bad. <laughs> I thought it was like an, an illegal underground mic. Like we're gonna, like we can. We're just like gonna that. have our mic here. There's, there's not a business for that's making money. We're just gonna have it here. That's right. <laughs> that's what I thought it was. Like an abandoned mall or some shit. You know, you just... Just felt, it feels like that. No, it definitely feels like that. Yeah, but like that's you know those are the places we we did comedy. And it's like you can bypass all of that. You you could you could really just you know. You could shake your ass on in front of a camera and on a TikTok thing or whatever, and you can book out your whole, you know, people will just want to see you. And it's a little harder to translate the stand up. I've worked with like, you know, some TikTokers. Mm-hmm. And like the thing is that does happen, it's kind of funny. It's like a lot of sometimes their audience aren't stand up fans. And so they're doing like other content that's like not comedy. And then they book out a stand up tour. Yeah. And then what happens is it's like they go to a comic club. And their fans are, you know, say their fans are like 12-year-old girls. Now, you have to be 18 again in a comedy club, typically. Even the young ones are 21. And so they book out these <laughs> these tours and like five people come to the shows. That is I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. I did a show in, uh, I did a show in Maui uh, in March. And like the guy, the comedian before me was like a TikToker. I'm not going like, to make fun of him or anything. But but he was like a, he was like a TikToker that didn't, that just like kind of, like, like, you can do that, but it takes a second to figure out comedy. Like it takes a second to be able to like not suck. I think, uh, like, like, I, like I feel like anyway. I, like it did for me at least. I don't know some people maybe better, but like so, so they blow up on TikTok and then they book all these shows like you're saying, and they've never done comedy. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, they never do. Yeah, like, and their their fans are not stand up fans. Their fans legally can't get in the shows. So yeah, they book it, out a weekend at a comedy club, and then no one shows up, and the club's like, "Hey, man, where's all your fans? That you had, you know." 500,000 followers they're like ah they're they're eating dinner oh, they're uh, all 12 <laughs> they're all 12 <laughs> yeah they can't say that but in reality they're on to say yeah they're they can't come here legally they're yeah they're 12 years old they're yeah that's what they're, 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 the club one was so mad. Uh, like uh, the the Maui club one was so mad that uh, the guy that came before me, like he was just like he was so pissed. The guy like pulled nobody. Like you, just, he the exact same situation you said happened. He was so he was so pissed that guy pulled no one. And he's like a huge TikTok. He's like a huge dude. But I mean, I mean, you like it's 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 hard to hustle in Maui if you've never been there because like you're going to a place you've never even. I mean, for me anyway, it's like doing a show in a market I've never even been. I mean, obviously you can print on tourists and stuff. I mean, it's, it's like an easy market for that, but like, but outside of like, you're just like, I mean, you're going to an, a, a part of America I've never even been. So, I mean, I kind of understand it. It's just like, he didn't do any work outside of it. You know I mean, you got to, you got, I was doing like radio and flyers and social media and like all that. I mean, you had to hit it. You have to hit those markets hard. You're selling high tickets. You know what I mean? You're selling like expensive tickets. So, I mean, but yeah, you just lots to, do, lots to do in Maui, right? Like be outside. Before the fire, <laughs> yeah, before the fire I played. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if where I went is still there. But it was, uh, but, but I, don't know. I don't know. It's a beautiful place, so that's for sure. It is cool, yeah. I worked in Hawaii only once. I was like, wow, I'm getting paid to be here. I'm coming home with money. This is stupid. Exactly. <laughs> Where'd you go? I went to just the main island of Honolulu. That's awesome. Man. I haven't yeah. been there. That sounds awesome. It's that's great. Fun. The shows were like, there was nobody there. It was like a 4th of July show, and there's nobody there. Oh, so, yeah, uh, that guy was probably bummed, but it's like, yeah, you take a chance, you roll the dice, whatever. He, you know, he was not too broken up about it, but if you still got paid to go. I mean, that's worth it. 
I, oh. I had to hustle down there. I, I had to pass out flyers, bro. I, I was like, I was like, I saw, I saw tickets. I was like, I'm gonna pass out flyers. A tourist. I just did old, old style. I'm, I'm like, just passing out flyers, my face on them for like three days, and I'm like, and like, I pulled a lot of people off that. I don't think I would have done well without that. Like to be honest, because it's a hard market. They're like, you're white, fuck you. <laughs> like basically, like they, you know, even decided to pray on the tourists and say the locals, you know. <laughs> well, you know what, flyers are actually coming back, in my opinion, because everything's on the internet now. Every source of promotion is on their phone or a computer. It's through the social media advertisement that people just scroll right by it. Whereas you hand someone a flyer, that's personal. They, they, what they can see the physical thing. No one's putting up flyers anymore. So the clubs that do put up flyers, like in my area, always sell the best. Hmm. They always sell the most tickets. And but these and these shows that like, oh, we we put up on the uh, what's happenings on Facebook, and should more people should have came it's like that you know so it's sometimes promoting flyers, people promoting. yeah they promoted to a bunch of people promoting <laughs> like you yeah. know it's like it's, you know, it's just like a bunch of group of other people advertising <laughs> their own shit to each other like, yeah. it's, it's, it's such a don't the, the only market like flyers didn't work for me was seattle because everybody just thought i was homeless like, i was trying to pass out i was trying to pass out flyers there was like who the fuck's this homeless guy i'm not taking a flyer right now like they're just like that's the only market it didn't work in so far like it definitely pulls at least five i mean you know, you can worst case five people just just off that. I mean, you know, maybe fifty if you're doing it right. There but, you go. You know, a flyer at the venue. Up, you know, if it's up two weeks before your show starts, just put a flyer up at the venue. And so many is. clubs don't want to do that. So many, I've done bars like, well, you know, maybe just put a poster up, and you know, for a couple weeks before the show, and they're like, uh, I mean, I don't know. We gotta print out a poster. I, I hate money. I don't know. It's yeah, like, it's like, oh, it's all social media. It's all the Facebook what's happening now. Yeah, yeah. They don't want anybody telling them otherwise. They don't want anybody telling them what to do, you know, which is, like, ridiculous. Let's just put up a fucking poster for God's sake. Dude, it's like a 5,000 ROI. Like, like, you mean, like, like 5,000% return on, it, on on investment. It's like a 25-cent piece of paper. You sell, like, fucking 40 tickets. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, it's like, like, like the like of the Ozarks, man. I clean up. Like, if you put if you put a flyer, like, the exact same thing you're saying. If you put a flyer in one of those places, man, I'll, you'll clean up those towns, like, those towns on the street, those bars on the street. Man, like 100 percent Yeah, you, you need flyers. I mean, it's all I think they're coming back a little bit. They no are. One, no one you sees Hi, now. Anthony. I'm doing great so far. I'm wearing a dually. I'm wearing a dually's hat. Yeah, you are, bro. Yeah, you are. Have you met Des Mulroney before? Then so again, a big storm hitting for eastern United States this Saturday coming. It's gonna bring high winds and heavy rain all across the entire eastern United States, including Nova Scotia, PEI, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Maine, New Hampshire, Boston, New York, and all these places. There's another storm heading for Vancouver, Victoria. This weekend coming, it's going to bring an even larger storm coming around American Thanksgiving week. That's going to drive all the cold air all the way down to southeastern United States. Late next week, there's a long-range forecast. And lot, there's a lot of storms heading for Japan. The cold air warming right in each other in Japan as for right now. That's crazy, man. That was a lot of, that was a lot of news in like three sentences. That was a, I feel like a lot happened in that, man. That's like a volcano is about to erupt in Iceland. Oh God, <laughs> it's, it's a bad time to be in Iceland, man. Like, it's bad. You what said else? Iceland? Yeah, a volcano in Iceland. Oh, erupting? Yeah, right now. I didn't even know there's a volcano. It's acting up. Wait, what? Did he break up? Is he in Iceland now? <laughs> no, I just did a report for Iceland. That's crazy. <laughs> Something <laughs> Iceland. I, I think I think, that, I think he's just Iceland. from Iceland. Yeah, then he froze up. Like it's just, he's like, "There's a volcano in Iceland." The, the screen froze. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "There's a volcano just erupted," and then his screen went. <laughs> it went dark. That's a cliffhanger weather report. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like a weather guy who's on the ground. <laughs> dude, dude, he had like three books in three sentences. Like I'm impressed. Like I was just like, that's a lot of information in three sentences. I'm like, I was like, I like that use of words, man. That's, that's smart. I, I like I, maybe you broke up. I couldn't only make out like three words. It was, it was Japan and then volcano and Iceland. Like I'm sending you a link now. Okay. <laughs> so, volcano and Iceland. Yes. It's happening right now. Wow. I is is that like a popular volcano in Iceland? I didn't know Iceland had a volcano. I thought they were known for like uh, like bodybuilders or whatever. I just uh, sent a video. 
I'm on planet. Of a volcano? This is Frank McDowell, my own TV station live from City, Nova Scotia. Major volcano is about to erupt in Iceland. They evacuate a whole lot of people Iceland because the volcano is acting up in Iceland right now. Smooth and volcanic ash up in the air. As for November 13, 2023, I want every single person to not to travel to Iceland at this time because the volcano is really dangerous. That could erupt any time now. I want every single person to be prepared. All airplanes, aircrafts, helicopters must avoid Iceland because the volcano is acting up in Iceland. Because the volcano can be really, really, really dangerous. That can spool volcano gash up in the air. I want every single person in Iceland to be extra prepared since they, they evacuated a whole lot of people in Iceland because the volcano is acting up. It may change the weather. It may change the weather patterns, the currents, and things like this. All aircraft must avoid Iceland because the volcano is acting up. Because the volcano is really, 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 really bad. It's happening right now. The volcanic ash is going to have it spilling up in the air. And a major volcano is about to erupt in Iceland anytime now. We do not know yet. I want every single person in Iceland to be mighty prepared. Don't travel to Iceland at this time. Don't go to Iceland at this time. Because the volcano can be really dangerous in Iceland. It's acting up as for right now. Do not travel to Iceland. If you have anybody living in Iceland, be prepared for a major volcano. Be safe and stay safe. And stay away from Iceland. Be safe. There goes my thing. There you go. <laughs> Clear message. I like that. Stay away from Iceland. <clears throat> where where is this happening now? I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's like, that's crazy, man. So, is he still on? Weather, weatherman. Yeah. So if you're there, you should leave. Probably, I guess. <laughs> You know, most weathermen, he, Frankie is different. You know, most weathermen will, will do the forecast with their eyes open. But uh, <laughs> uh, I think it really, it, it gives you that feeling of fear, you know, that this volcano is going to go off any second. I He's was scared and I'm not even there. <laughs> Guess what? I just sent you a video. Okay. Oh, he sent another one. I, I just he, sent you another video. The guy acting like a dog. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's a good report, man. <laughs> Stay away from ice. I just <laughs> okay, guys. Let's do a guy acting like a dog. <laughs> burr, burr, burr. Thanks for watching, Frank. Though. Frankie, why is that so funny, dude? Nailed it. Why is that so funny, dude? That's <laughs> nailed it. I was, I was just like a dog. <laughs> Where? Does he keep breaking up? Where where is Frank? I think he's freezing it to send videos. Or he just left. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I just sent you a link to a guy acting like a dog. Uh, Another one. Just... <laughs> it was awesome. That was you. Was man. Yeah, dog. That was pretty. There's two people pretending to be a dog. Convincing. That's the same one, I think. <laughs> Anthony, I sent you a link to the video of the guy acting like a dog. Yeah, I think we just watched that, though. Then we just watched that. Yeah. It was great. It was great. It's, just, it's so real. It's like the realest dog I've ever seen. Crazy, and, and things are going great so far on my side. It's windy outside in Sydney, Nova Scotia. It was changed to showers or flurries in my area right now. And West Coast is going to be a lot of rain as well. In the next week, it's going to bring one storm right after another in Vancouver, Seattle, Portland. It's going to bring lots of showers and rain in Los Angeles. Good. Deserve the rain. Yeah. There you go.
go. You got all right. You got any more uh, any more weather for us, Frank? Before we get out here. And that means that uh, oh, lots of uh, there's a there's lots of thunderstorms going on in southeastern Australia. They're getting lots of hail there lately. In severe weather, this is their severe weather season. This in, in this El Nino summer coming up in Australia is going to bring a whole lot of brush fires in Australia. That's crazy. Yeah, it's going to be bad. This is a, this is a bad time in the world. The brush fires. Those fires are still going on in Australia. There's another volcano whacking up in Italy too. And now Etna is in Italy. What? We avoid oh, Italy. A volcano in Italy. Yeah. If you're in Iceland, you should go to Italy. If you're in Italy, you should go to Iceland. Experience the other cultures uh, volcano. Volcanoes. And did you hear did you hear about Blue Sky? A new social media app, Blue Sky. It's just just like the old Twitter. How so? And things are going great so far. If you want to follow me on social media, my Twitter is at FrankieMacD. My Facebook is FrankieMacDonald. My Instagram is FrankieMacD1984. My, my Blue Sky is FrankieMacD. My TikTok is FrankDown1984. My Clapper is FrankDown1984. My Twitch is FrankDown1984. My Snapchat is FrankieMCD1. My YouTube channel is Dogs Wolves. And my LinkedIn is FrankieDonald. Best luck to you on FrankieDonald. You know, the Anthony Rogers show every Tuesday night. You on Facebook? Thanks for you. That's always like a. It's always like a, like the grand finale at a fireworks show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Frankie. Uh, yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's the most famous weatherman on earth. Honestly, I think like uh, <laughs> like he is. He's got like the. Like, I think I think he is. See, it's hard to, name, hard to name the second most famous. Is the thing. Well, I guess. <laughs> well, there's Al Roker. He's pretty famous. I guess. Yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> when he's barking like a dog, man, I'm just laughing. That's so so I don't know why it's so funny, man. Like I was, just, I don't know why that was so funny, but that was so yeah. funny. That guy's funny, man. Is he? Is he a comic or? I I don't know. He does like funny skits sometimes. Where, like, I think he blew up doing the weather. He's been like Tosh and a bunch of stuff like that. He's got. I mean, he's huge. He's huge online. He's like I don't, I don't know what he does. I think he started out doing the weather. I think it's his whole thing, and then he does like short comedy skits, like they're. Just kind of goofy and like kind of funny, man. I don't know. It's like innocently funny. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, that guy was funny. That guy was funny, man. Well, the like ice, the ice thing cracked me up. Dude, dude, yeah, I just like tell you not to go there. Boy. They do not go to Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> That's your first Iceland. exposure to to Frankie McDonald, though. Des. Frank. Oh, uh, or that was his, him. That, yeah, that's your first exposure to that guy, Frankie. Dude, that's before, yeah, first exposure to that guy. I never, I never met him. I, he, so he's not a St. Louis guy, anything, right? No, no, he's uh, he's from Canada. He's Nova like Scotia. Nova oh, Scotia. Wow. Yeah. That guy's funny, man. That, that's the first time I've seen him. That guy's funny. Man. First time he came on my show, somebody booked him to come on Crime Report over over on Compound. I didn't really approve the booking or whatever, but he was on talking for a minute. I was like, get this fucking guy off. <laughs> 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 dude the best part's like uh, he steamrolls every conversation so it's like great to put him in just like like always 30 minutes into the show every time it's just it's just it's just like the it's just the thing. it's just it's just what i do i don't know it's just like the, uh, it's, it's good to get weather from around the world and and like seeing people like you guys were chill about it and like go with it but a lot of people get so pissed dude because like they'll, be, they'll just be like taking themselves so seriously and then he comes on he's like he's like the weather here is like this and they're just getting so pissed because like in the middle of like they're like in the middle of like a story or something and he just comes in like cuts them off <laughs> and like dude it's so funny to me man like it's like fun. <laughs> it's hey, he's funny that was funny that that dog thing when he kept going on ice i'm like i'm laughing like i didn't know if it was like being serious at first and i'm like oh no he's he's this is a skit and he's that's, joking, that's yeah. the thing like that that's real that's the best comedy you don't really know if he's joking or not, but no, that guy, that guy's great, man. I wish him all the success, dude. Yeah, so right. he, he's huge, right? Yeah, he's pretty big. Yeah, I, I'd say like it's funny. He, funny. he constantly just self promotes. Like comes on everything, just like says all this like social media, then goes on to the next one. Like just like he's like a constant self promote, like weatherman and self promoter. You know, that's what you gotta do, man. That's the world <laughs> we live in. With. You gotta do that. You know, that's a rare combination, too. Not a lot of weathermen, self promotion weathermen, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Yeah, he's one of a kind, man. It definitely, uh, it's <laughs> man.
man. Um, it's funny looking at what he follows. He follows like all the porn stars that are on the show. Like, like if you look at his like, <laughs> you look, at his <laughs> you look at his followers. It's all just like porn stars and like different fake accounts of the same porn star. Like, I think he follows Nikki Knightley like twenty different Nikki Knightley accounts. Like, she's the usual. Co- she's the usual co-host on here, and like he follows probably twenty different accounts that say it's Nikki Knightley. Like. It's funny, man. Like, yeah, dude, you gotta listen to the alt weatherman, man. All the mainstream weatherman, they don't got it. Guys like yeah. Frankie, you gotta go to the alt guys. Just said it just fake news, man. fake weather, fake weather. It is fake weather though. They, they should stop doing it because they're not they're not even close. They're never close. Frankie's pretty on point though. Like, yeah, you know, like we'll, like he'll say a bunch of stuff and I'll like look at it like a week later. I'm like, that actually happened. That's crazy. He tells it like it is. Yeah, he's, there you go. <laughs> he's giving us the truth. <laughs> He's no not problem. sugarcoating it. No. <laughs> he, he, no bias, you know, towards rain or not rain. He just, you know, straight down the middle. Don't go to Iceland now. That's all, that's all he cares about. <laughs> Do I even know there are volcanoes, like, in Iceland? I thought volcanoes, they were in, like, you know, Hawaii or something. I didn't even, I, I don't know volcanoes. Like, I didn't even know there was one. Is it, it actually right you to, It should inspire you to, like, research it a little bit. And it did. Discover it more. Did. What's the guy? Even, yeah. They actually erupted. We find out, like, I'm gonna look it up. Iceland volcano two days ago, impending eruption. They're evacuating, it looks like. They've wow. evacuated a lot of people, a whole lot of people. It's really, really, really dangerous in Iceland. Dude, I, I thought he was in Iceland because he was like screaming in the camera, like, do not come. And they, he, he's there, right? He had the energy like an emotion like he was there and it's the ashes cool. were falling on him. Like that he, was great. He did, he did, he really did. Like it was the Hindenburg, you know. Oh, the humanity. You know? But yeah. like what's weird is that like anybody who's traveling to Iceland, they're gonna hear about it, you know. <laughs> they're gonna do the research. <laughs> gonna, you know, who who is that message for? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like I wasn't really planning on going to Iceland, but now I, I definitely won't. Not on a whim. Yeah, not on a whim. Yeah, I was going to go to Iceland, but yeah, Frank McDonald told me not to. So Talk me out of it. Yeah. See what the reports are. I wish for the amazing new iPhone 15 Pro. Shots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this one, the one with titanium, switched to Verizon. Yeah, with the trade uh, that guy had, yeah, he had the emotion of, <laughs> of him. It's your last chance to trade in any iPhone for a new iPhone 15 Pro on us, only on Verizon. <laughs> Now to a major headline developing overseas. Iceland declaring a state of emergency due to the high risk of a volcanic eruption. It could be just hours or days away. Thousands of earthquakes have hit the area and a small town has been evacuated. Here's ABC's Lama Hassan. Tonight, authorities in Iceland declaring a state of emergency, ordering thousands to evacuate amid fears of a potential volcanic eruption. The southwestern village of Grandavik, now a ghost town, many of its 4,000 residents taking refuge in nearby shelters. The iconic Blue Lagoon geothermal spa just miles away temporarily closed. A string of earthquakes and tremors recently striking the region. Hundreds of small earthquakes every day for more than two weeks, buckling roads and splitting walls in people's homes. Is Bjork now okay? monitoring an underground buildup of magma beneath the village, fearing it could burst through the Earth's crust within days. Aviation ah. officials also raising their alert level to orange, indicating increased risk of an eruption. In 2010, orange. a massive volcanic eruption in Iceland caused widespread disruptions to orange. transatlantic air travel. More than 100,000 flights cancelled. Rachel, Iceland is one of the most seismically active regions in the world. In fact, the same volcanic system that has been prompting all of these evacuations erupted just this past July. Rachel. Community on edge tonight. Lama, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's serious when it's a British reporter. That was, that was a, a weird a time in Iceland. Problem. Yeah. Serious overseas shit. Always a British reporter. Yeah. Count yeah. On. Get a British lady in her 40s. A nuclear bomb has just been detonated. <laughs> That's all the serious shit. I didn't know that. Volcanoes in Iceland. One of the most what? seismically active uh, regions in the world. Wow. Well, do, does America, other than Hawaii, do we have volcanoes in here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think Mount St. Helens. Yeah, we have one like Washington. I think. Oh, like, yeah, Mount St. Helens. Yeah, that went off a few years really ago. Cool. Well, 40 years ago. What about uh, Colorado? Do they have any uh, volcanoes? They got a lot of mountains. 
Does that increase the chance of getting a, a volcano? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of shaped like a volcano, right? So. <laughs> There's a lot of things that might be volcanoes. I don't know. I'm an idiot. I have no idea. I don't know. I, I, I should know all of it. I took a geology class. I almost said geography. That's how bad. I almost said, I took a geology class, which it was all about volcanoes and everything. Like, you don't want learn things. Mm-mm. Every kid has to take a geology class and it knows nothing about a- anything. I don't, I don't know how volcanoes work, where they are. Are, are there volcanoes underwater? Can they erupt from underwater? Is that a thing? I've heard that's a thing. I, I don't even. I don't even know. I don't know. Wow! It makes me want research. Yeah, I mean, it's not interesting. It's the problem. You know, it's not really a day to day. It doesn't. And that's probably why you don't remember it. You know, is it just was like, okay, you learned it, passed the test. Fuck that. Yeah, but some people really like it. I, I wonder why some people are into to, into rocks. Because like there's a whole study like someone has to know like like how do you like rocks Aspergers <laughs> yeah I, I was thinking, like how do you get interested in rocks to the point where it's like oh yeah this is going to erupt in a hundred years I've always been interested in people like psychology but that's not profitable so I mean it's probably more profitable than being into rocks. <laughs> I guess. I guess. What's well, problem? You gotta be like a, a computer guy that wants to end humans to make money. The engineers are making all the money. <laughs> Who wants to end humans? If, if you hate, if you hate humanity, you will make all the money right now. That's this is the way it is. If you invest in like AI, you put your stocks in AI. I mean, you'll make so much money. We have to have intelligence and money, yeah. Not not just the uh, the hate isn't enough. It's not enough, <laughs> but it's it's a component. You do need the hate. Yeah, they hate humans. Maybe the most important one. Oh, I mean, they they probably come up with stuff to benefit man mankind all the time. It's just that, like you know, what hurts some people uh, helps others, right? I guess, got, and then, but it's not necessarily balanced, right? I mean, some shit only helps like five people, but kills the rest of the world, you know. And that's like, uh, that's why fucking Bill Gates is buying all the beef, all the farmland and shit. Yeah, but then some stuff like they want to do like the driverless cars, and it's like, yeah, we're gonna make all the trucks. It's like, okay, so you're gonna take out all the truck drivers. They're not gonna have a job, and who's that gonna help? So, oh, it's gonna help the corporations. Oh, it's gonna help. It's gonna help Jeff Bezos. It's going to help the guys who run the corporation. It's not going to help the workers. We're, yeah. you know, they're going to be out of jobs. I don't think it's ever going to happen. I don't, nobody wants that. Literally, nobody wants that. You would think nobody wants it, but then they're like, oh, yeah, we need to build this technology to make this happen. It's like, well, why? Well, those pricks, you know, so yeah, why, why fuck with it, right? How does it help anybody besides those, whoever it is that's trying to come up with it? That's the only people that it helps. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's what I've been saying. But that people are like, "Oh, it's it's innovation." It's like, yeah, but it's innovation that's going to take away your job. So, do you, is not all innovation is good? I, and this is my hot political take, but I don't know how, how it came up. <laughs> is, I'm running for office because of this show. This inspired me. <laughs> no, but like, I mean, even like these like AI scientists, they'll they'll come out themselves and they'll be like, "Yeah, this this might end humanity." And I'm like, well, then why did why did you stop studying it? What? Ah, they're flattering themselves, you know. The AI, like creating intelligence, they're nowhere near that, you know. It, it's yes, it's going to end humanity. It's not that strong. You can't even ask it real shit. I asked this AI chatbot like what what the term "dick smoker" meant, <laughs> and it won't even tell me. It refuses to say. Dick smoker. I don't even think yeah. I know what, what a dick. Smoker. It's like a it's like a gay person who sucks dick. <laughs> see, see now, now yeah. Like, what, if, what, what if you asked the AI? It would go like, yeah, don't use that term. That's all it said. Oh, AI would say, don't do that. Yeah, it's like that's an offensive term. Don't say that. Well, you just it just woke. <laughs> you only have a parade about it. You can't talk about all the AI. Just a giant, like we only have giant parades and months dedicated to it, but you can't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, none of the rules make any sense. I'm just like, what? 
like all the time they're just like making up shit. She's like crazy. It's all driverless cars in the parade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah well, I think AI. It's like I think it's it knows it. Like when you ask AI, you know what a what a dick smoker was. I, it, it knew it. It just didn't want to say. It, it just woke. exactly. That's that's fucked up, isn't it? I think it's it's just, I know, but I can't tell you. You don't need to know. Just you just all you need to know is it's like a school marm or something, you know? It, yeah, well, it's like, you know, it's it's like an HR worker. It's like, well, I can't say that. You know, I know it's on record, but I can't tell. That's what AI is right now. I mean, we knew, like, I don't know if they'll ever make like an unwoke AI. It just, comes <laughs> out. <laughs> just, just completely honest. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> like you think Kamala Harris was born in America and just, you know, an AI robot that does that. I don't see that happening. That that I don't see ever. But you know, I don't know. I mean, I I don't think they should keep on studying it though. Dude, I was you think it's like, uh, I'm sorry, good. Mm-hmm. I was just asking, just to follow up. I mean, if if they thought you think they should just drop studying AI. Here's the thing, I, you def, you got to have regulations on it. And again, now like. I sound like a politician right now. I believe me, I, I'm not running for office. I, I never will. But I think you got to have regulations, some kind of regulation. You can't just let it go unhinged. You can't let it take out all these jobs. I think you got to put something to damper it. Stop studying. It's like when it comes to China, right? So it's like um, you have to have also some hindrance on studying it and advancing it in general because. If China has some kind of capability that we don't have, like you want to limit the capability too, because if someone has the capability, now it's now it's out of our hands, and now that that's a problem. So it's like, ideally, you you have some international law where you can't even study it because you don't want people to be capable of developing something that could, you know, like a well, weapon. To do it, you can't hold them back. You know, marches on. But you, you're saying that AI, like, they should damper it, like, kind of, like, put a ceiling on how intelligent it could be, like artificial, you know, 85 IQ or something. You, you got to put some kind of limit on it. I mean, because what's going to happen is, is someone's going to try to use it as a as a weapon. That, that's going to be the first thing. They're going to use it. Right. Yeah, he's going to make an army. Uh, I've got no yeah. imagination. I'm just trying to figure out how you could weaponize AI. So, well, what's going to happen? Drones, this is just, this is my prediction. Let it be on the record. China is going to get an AI technology. And then what they're going to do is they're going to sway American public opinion. So with right now with, uh, you know, the face changes and you, you can make ads and news reports that look, you know, like news. And so the problem is when AI is going to sway public opinion in my eyes. And I think one of our enemies, like China or someone or Russia or whatever. Is, or the federal government of the United States of America. <laughs> yeah. Or America or, or Iran is essentially they're going to try to control us. And they're going to they're going to try to sway our opinion through the algorithms. <laughs> the algorithms they are going to build, you know, AI things that can essentially hack in any algorithm, any social media company they're going to control the soul like it, it's going to be once the cat's out of the bag like then it might get to a point where you cannot regulate it it might get to a point where regulation might be impossible if our enemy gets those capabilities so my thing is china well they run the world the government they, they i mean like i i kind of figure like whatever china wants is what joe biden's going to do so i mean i i think it's i think it's it's too late I mean, I, don't know. It's a, I, I mean, they'll, they'll, they will hand they will hand China the technology to do that. I mean, like even Clinton was selling all kinds of technology to to uh, China. Well, plus uh, they they send like the blueprints to everything to those factories to make them. So they just give them the designs. I mean, like, like no matter what what high technology we have, we just like give them to these idiots to make basically. And it's like they took. I mean, they have all the world's factories and all the people. I and mean, we're basically. I mean, it's. I mean, it's close if not over. I mean, you're right. It's. It's like. I mean, should we like fight it or learn to make nikes you know it's like the like the whole thing you know it's like the whole thing you know you got kids oh no yeah me neither so like like we'll be dead you know by the time it's that bad thank god (laughs) 
There's an expiration date on all this shit. Yeah, it's just boring. It's like the most boring communist dictator, like, like communist takeover of all time. It's just so boring, you know. It's like, it's like I wish I could be like lied to better. Yeah, like Red Dawn or something, where they all land uh, the paratroopers, the Russian, uh, <laughs> Russia attacking the U.S. on our own soil. Did you ever see? It? I mean, you probably didn't see it, but I saw both of them. Yeah, the old one and the new one. Yeah. Oh, really? Ones. The new That's... one was North Korea, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was, I was gonna. Those are good. Those are good movies. The, the, the big thing I think is that we have to stress the importance of staying, having a free mind, get off the phones, get off the computers, get off all that. Just think. For yourself. After the show, after the show, get off your phone. Like, if, you're, if you're watching home after the show, get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, we speak the truth, though. Okay? No, you're right. They don't want to talk about this. I mean, you, you can hear in our voices that what we're saying is the truth. And we, and I mean, I'm not running for office. You don't have to keep reminding us. We don't think you're running for office. I'm not running for office. <laughs> <laughs> That's not running for office. Actually. You're starting to sound like you're running for office. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, just by me saying China is going to take over, this might get taken down. They might, they might take your channel down. No, you're right. Because I was, uh, I was writing like miniature cartoons to go before the show, and I was, I was like, oh, imagine. Uh, I was like, I was like, uh, bearded superhero saves the world from China infiltrating all Americans institutions. Like, and then, and then named like all these institutions. It goes, Oh, you can't do conspiracy theories, but they let me write one about like shape shifting reptilians. Like right before, like, like, like they, and then like I said something like, uh, I go make a cartoon about China losing world war three. And then and it just like said, it wouldn't even do it. I'm just like, Oh my God. Like you're just telling them yourselves. You know, they're, they're just like telling them themselves like with it. It's so wow. it seems arbitrary sometimes too, you know. But that, that yeah, I see what you're saying. That that sounds like it's a, a pro-China agenda. Yeah, like super. Yeah, and you can say about anybody else. So you can make up any. I, I made I, I made like some like I it typed some pro it, it typed some vaccine like thing where the, uh, I I said like make a make a uh, script about five rich people trying to depopulate the world through vaccines. And they did that, but not the China one. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I mean, it's just, it's just so weird where the lines are at. AI art is pretty interesting too. I mean, like if you just like you know the text to uh, text to image, if you come up with a cool text prompt, you know, and then evolve it and stuff, you can really. I mean, it does some crazy shit, and it's interesting to see the woke choices that it'll make sometimes too. Like, yeah, you won't, yeah, certain wild. words you just won't use. You won't use like Trump or cocaine or like there's like a couple other words. But fuck. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't I haven't noticed that one yet. <laughs> it's hilarious. None of them will take that word. <laughs> But no, China, they already control the algorithms for TikTok. You, yeah. you heard about that. I know you Have know. you seen all the idiots on TikTok now just like being like NPCs all the time for money? It's like, it's like weird. Like you, they're like doing this like weird thing. I'm like, I'm like, is China just making us all idiots? Like because we're playing to our vanity and like all this weird. I, like it just, it just seems like, it, it seems really weird. Like you'll have kids in like, I mean, like where you're from, Pat, like these, these kids in New York will just be like on the street corner, like doing this weird NPC bullshit on TikTok, man. It's fucking weird. Dude, and guess what? And guess who's controlling the algorithm that pushes that forward, that gets more views and more likes and rewards that? It's China. And I'm not running for office. China, China <laughs> controls the algorithm. They China. control all that, man. And you know, and if you go to, if you're on TikTok in China, what what gets promoted there? It's educational stuff. It's stuff about, you know, volcanoes. Right. Science and actual stuff that, you know, you want to learn about. But here in America, the algorithm they give us? Yeah. It's that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, go cut your dick off. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. But it's hey, like doing a whole, bunch of, a whole bunch of shit. And so and that's, that's what they're giving us. So yeah. they're already trying to do that. And once they get at AI, dude, beware, dude. Beware. Hey, I just started a, a, a live stream at uh, on YouTube. I'm doing it at 11 o'clock Monday through Friday. And I got a little setup to do for it. I hope you guys uh, will make it sometime. But um, it was great meeting you, Des. And and Anthony, good good meeting you too, man. Good show. Thank Thanks for having awesome. me. And yeah, uh, hope to see you again soon. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Take it. Good meeting you, man. All right. Uh, yep. So how long, are we still going? Or uh... We go a little long. Yeah, it's like, so usually about an hour. He's going, you know, oh, you're an hour. Oh, I, I didn't know how long it, we had, you, you did it or I was holding you up for it. It depends. There's so many different things, but every week it's different, man. Like, like some sometimes I go an hour, sometimes I go like, like it depends on what's going on, man. Like usually there's like a bunch of random people coming in all the time and stuff. You know? Fun, man. It's like a, it's like a fun, you know, people coming in and out, dude. This is the I done 
I like this is a, a, technically a podcast, right? It's like labeled a podcast, or yeah, yeah. Dude, the the, the last podcast I did, I, I did maybe four podcasts, and two of them have gone to me talk about China. I and, saw that in your clips, man. Actually, and I was like, I I kind of got amped when you're talking about it because like I I agree, man. Honestly, I think it's like a a huge threat nobody talks about. And you're kind of a young dude making jokes about. It. I think people need to hear that. To, to realize it's happening. And I think that, like, I mean, I mean, I really think, I definitely think it's happening. I mean, they make all of our phones and they spy on us and, like, that GPS uh, camera, like, you know, microphone. I mean, they're definitely, they're listening to us talk about them right now, you know? Right now, dude. Right now. And, dude, yeah. like, Mark Zuckerberg had, like, this is Mark Zuckerberg. He had, like, a thing, like, duct tape over his camera. He's and married so- to a Chinese woman. He's married to, to a girl from mainland China. Like also, like they've infiltrated, they've infiltrated every aspect of American culture, like sports, yep. internet, anything, Reddit. I mean, all everything. They've infiltrated everything. And that's why everything's so. That's why the rules are so weird and don't make sense because they're like Asian culture rules. Like, like oh, you can't say this word, but you can say this word. It just it didn't make any sense. It's just like all oh, ridiculous, man. It's like the most boring fascism ever. Yep, Chinese government, man. They're trying. You know, we know where they're heading, but uh, they go in Taiwan. You know, it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> like I, I always said this, I said, you know, we're we're America. You know, you go in Ukraine, we're gonna be like, yeah. But if you go in Taiwan, we're sending in the boys. You don't mess with capitalism, baby. Yeah, well, I mean, I still wonder if we could beat them in a war, even if they have like way more people than us and like all the factories. I bet America could still has like that fuck you attitude and all the guns where we'd still like beat their ass. And I almost wonder if it's going to be like the civilians beating their ass because our, our military is all like woke and ridiculous. I mean, not, I'm not going to say that like across the board, but it has gotten more like that. I'd say, I'd say at least I'm not going to disrespect our entire military. That's insane. But, but I mean, I think the civilians are kind of like more nuts now. And, and like, I, I think like if it comes down to it, we'll just still beat their ass. Like, we, we beat them. <laughs> Dude, we're, we're America. Like, you know, I, I've met Marines. Okay. I, I've met those guys. Like, yeah, they're tough guys. They, anytime you wear a Marine shirt, like, like dude, this guy's tough. It's just, it, and, you know, we're Americans. We're tougher than we're tougher than China. Oh, definitely. definitely. Chinese, yeah. Chinese Americans are also tougher, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying this is Chinese people, but there's something about being in America, living in cities like St. Louis and Chicago, being around all that filth. That makes you tough, dude. When you drive through 294 from Chicago to Indiana, that toughens you up. That makes you ready for war if you ever do want to go to war. So it's like, dude, yeah, if we went to war with China, I, I like our chances, man. Like our chances. We're just built for it. Yeah, I, I'll ask kids, like, I'll, I'll be, like, doing a show somewhere and be, like, a bunch of 19-year-olds in the military. I'm like, I'm like, you going to fuck up China? They're like, yep. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> like, every time. I'm like, you going to fuck them up? They're like, yeah. I'm like, thank God. Big guy, those guys are out there, man. Like, I mean, it's it's enough. Such situ- it's a weird world stage. We're playing like chess with like half the world right now, and we're losing. And we have Joe Biden. You know, it's like crazy. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, we'll see. I mean, I think I like to think that whenever, you know, when things get to its worst, America will come to its senses and go, you know what? Okay, we're at war. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. I, I'm actually pretty anti-war. <laughs> To be yeah, honest, yeah, like I keep, I, you know, I keep like, j- like we're gonna go. I actually like staying out of wars, actually. You know, like when people ask me about like Israel Palestine, what, what do we? I'm like, dude, why don't we just stay out of it? <laughs> like, is that their problem? Like, why do we have to? You know, yeah, it's like a two thousand year conflict going on. Like we're trying to involve in. Yeah, it's like that. Is this on us? People are like, dude, well, where do you stand? Where do you stand? I'm like, I do. I didn't know we were apart. That's like, you know, your neighbors are having a divorce. Like, hey, who you? St-? I'm like, that's not my marriage. That's that's <laughs> that's their that's their problem. They, you know. So yeah, I'm I'm actually pretty anti-war. I'm not. Rich, I hope they both lose. I'm pretty anti-war. <laughs> I, I hope they both lose. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, they both just lose, tie. They like tie lose. You know. Yeah. It's like, like, how are you gonna fight? How are you gonna kill people over religion? It's like every religion's like, don't kill people. And they're like, we're gonna kill you <laughs> if you don't believe what I believe. And I'm like, I don't think that's how. Did you read your book at all? <laughs> like, did you read any aspect of your religion at all? It just makes no sense. It's been that, and it's been that way for thousands of years. You know, killing, you know, killing people over religion. I mean, it's just the way. 
The way it's been, I don't know. I mean, religion is like it's like one of the ten rules, though. You know what I mean? It's just like it's just like it's so yeah. stupid. I mean, Christianity, at least. I mean, I don't know. It's just fucking stupid, man. Like, I, yeah. Uh, Chris Wolf sucks. Like I know. It's like, I mean, St. Louis. Like, you named St. Louis Chicago being kind of ghetto and stuff. That's true, but it's still better than the rest of the world, which is like weird. You know, it's like like St. Louis could be a complete piece of shit, but like it's still better than like any of the other country talking shit. Yeah, I, I think the thing with religion is like. I think even the the biggest religious fundamentalists, the people who are super super religious, I think they they look at their book and they go, "Well, we can't do all of this. <laughs> there's there's no way." So you know, we hate these guys, so we might as well just go kill these guys because there's we're, there's no way we can follow this. So let's let's just go because I think really if you look at if you read the Ten Commandments, it's like you can't you can't say the Lord's name in vain. That's that's one of them. You can't even like oh, Jesus Christ. You know, you can't say that offhandedly, and then you're done. That's boom. You clinched it. So I think I think the religious people they go, they take a lot of freedoms with it because they say, "Well, we can't follow all of it, so we might as well try to kill all of these people." And it ends up just getting ridiculous. And then yeah. they pick and what they do is they pick and choose. And this has always been the course of history. Then they pick. It's like, well, God said this. It's like, well, God also said that, which means to not do that. And you're not, you, you don't want to follow that one. You know, the part about don't murder people, don't kill people. But, oh, but now you want to follow this one that says, you know, it's all picky picky and choosy, you know? No, it's definitely weird. It seems like a weird excuse to like, start a war. It's like, yeah, like, uh, it's like, yeah, God told me he wanted me to fight you. <laughs> it's a weird, yeah. you know, it's, just be honest, you know, just like you want to take their shit, you know, just be honest. Be honest, you, yeah, you want territory. Territory's nice. Okay. Yeah, it's, ever, it's like, ever, I never speed. bought land, but buying land will probably feel nice. <laughs> well, it's nice to steal it. God, God just wants you to steal land, bro. Like that's all he wants you to do. He wants you to fucking steal land, cause global conflict. That's what God wants, you know. I, like, you know the guy. <laughs> that's what he wants. Global I mean, conflict. land is nice, dude. I I played. You know, you played Risk before. Oh yeah, it's a good game. The war game. I mean, dude. It's, yeah, it's like you take over countries, you take over, you know, you, you, go, you move your military, you try to take over the world. Like, I used to think, like, man, those dictators are such evil people. Do I play one game of Risk? And I was like, dude, I kind of get it. You're like, I want in. I want in. I, 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 I kind of get it a little. Like, I kind of, like, Hitler was horrible. Like, all those guys that want to take over, you know, the empires, whatever. But, dude, when I played a little bit of Risk, I was like, dude, I, I see where they're coming from. Because there's something about advancing your land and seeing like your name, right, taking over. Like, it's a hunt. It's it. Only land is nice. That will always be a thing. Trying to take over the land will always be a thing with humans, whether whether they're religious or not. We yeah, want you should, land. You should use cooler excuses to take over the world. You know, you should just be like, I want that. You know, <laughs> like you should, have, you should have cooler excuse. You have to bring like Jesus into it. You know, it's like, like what? you know, it's like. And Jesus wants me to murder your entire family so I can build a Chipotle here. That's what Jesus. <laughs> that's what that's what he wants. He said, you know. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah. Not, just be real. Just be real. Like I'm gonna take your fucking country. We need. We like you're like 9 11s fake. We need to put an uh, oil pipeline through five countries. Sorry guys. You guys. <laughs> you guys are just where the oil is at. You know. It's like that's where you're at. Sorry guys. You know. I like, just be honest, man. They already hate us anyway. You think it's like it's like nicer to lie to them? I mean, they still hate us. You may as well just tell them the truth. It's like it's like we're gonna take over your shit. There's nothing you can do about it. And I'm sorry. They, yeah, they might respect that. They I might, would. Like, they'd be like, hey, to be honest with you guys, it's like I'm an asshole, and I'm gonna come in and take it because I'm an asshole. It's like yeah. there's no religion. There's no oh no you, tariff or whatever. I want your shit. And I'm gonna yeah. take it. Yeah, I think they were. I think they were respected. I think like, oh, come in. Yeah, <laughs> I think they might even make a deal. Dude, there's so much clip in Afghanistan about how nobody even knew who Bin Laden was. They're like, they're like where's Bin Laden? Everybody's like, what? Like, it's just like a bunch of like they didn't even know the story. Like, it's so crazy how they use that to take over all those countries, man. Like, and those people had no fucking clue what was going on. And like, yeah, no, some honesty could have been used. You know, just been like, we just want your shit. You know, it's like. Like, like Aladdin kind of sucked as a movie, and we want your oil. You know, it's like we're just like get the fuck out. You know, we well, yeah, we want stuff and we want credit. Yeah, and we That's have more like, guns than you, so we're getting your stuff. So it's like move out of your house and give me your farm. You know. Yeah, but I, I was talking to a friend the other day about like Big Laden. It's like um, 
because we always want to take credit for like leaders will always take credit for like like my friends like do you well you know Obama killed Bin Laden I'm like Obama didn't kill Bin Laden <laughs> Ob- Obama just said hey go kill this guy that we've wanted to kill for twenty years go kill him now or ten years and then they killed him and then highly well, trained professionals well maybe him. well my problem is there's not even evidence of that either I'm not saying it didn't happen I'm just saying like. I, they show you no evidence, like other than like trust me, bro. Like the internet source, you know, like, like, like he comes on TV during The Apprentice, like, like he interrupts The Apprentice, and, which, and he's like, "Oh, by the way, Bin Laden died." And then there's no evidence, like we didn't show you because we don't want to be in a martyr. I'm like, but you announced it. Doesn't that still create a martyr? It's like you can't show us evidence of this happening. I don't know. He's like, everything's sketchy on TV. It all seems like theater. Everything seems fake. I'm just like, I'm like, no one has evidence anymore. They just like say words. I never yes. thought I never thought about that. That Ben Laden. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying I didn't see any evidence of it. That's all I'm saying. I, mean, I, I feel like I feel like it's a bold claim to be like I don't have evidence that it didn't happen. You know what I mean? It, it, so, you know what I mean? It's just like, but it's just I feel like the people that uh, that make claims should prove what they say. Like, you know? That's true. Did, did they have like a, a yeah? Like how did they? Did they have like no a footage on their head and like they? Obama walked up. Obama just walked up to the podium. And like they interrupted the apprentice, made you wait twenty minutes. Like, like basically, like they inter- they inter- it was Don- there. It was like this weird Donald Trump Barack Obama argument before he oh, Trump ran for office. Like he, he made fun of him at the White House dinner and, and like kind of like punked him a little bit. And, and then like he would interrupt his show. He interrupted the apprentice after after because Trump would always say his birthday was fake. So he interrupted his TV show, made him wait twenty minutes, just like this, like waiting for the president. And then and then he walked to the podium. He's like and then announced Barack Obama or uh, 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 Osama bin Laden dying. And then he was just like an announcement. It wasn't like anything. It was just like, like we're talking right now, just being like, "Hey, I killed, bro- I killed, a, yeah, I killed Bin Laden, dude." You know what I mean? It's just, like, it's just like the same thing. It's like, it's like there's no fucking, there's no proof at all of this at all, like at all. <laughs> like it just, it just yeah. doesn't make sense to me. It's just like I don't even know. Like, and then you find out he was like a CIA asset. Like he was like, like they funded him during like the Russian Afghanistan wars, and like he was a CIA guy. And like the whole thing just sounds like made up, and like just like they used it to like take over countries for oil. Like you know, that's basically all it seems like to me. And like it's not even—I don't necessarily even disagree with that. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, I don't know if I even disagree with it. But it's just like I just—I disagree with lying to the entire world about it. And like and, and like their troops. Because how many people in my generation joined the military because they thought they're fighting for some good thing? You know? Yeah. And how many but people died too? You know? Dude, yeah, death of both sides, man. Yes, I mean. They're just like, I'm gonna go fuck up Bin Laden. And they go over there and like they're like, who the fuck's Bin Laden? You know, they're like, I don't know Bin Laden. <laughs> it's a bunch of normal people. It's like if people just invaded us right now, some story we never heard of and don't even speak our language, you know, that's kind of what happened to him. Yeah, he just, he just killed some guy that we never knew about. Like, yeah, we killed your guy. Like, who? And who the fuck? Yeah, it's weird. He's like a CIA guy. He's in Pakistan, apparently. So what the fuck? I mean, that's a story at least. I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I can't believe anything, man. It's weird. I don't I don't know. I just don't everything seems like a, everything seems like CIA theater. I just like this weird like program just to make us all argue about dumb shit constantly. I, I yeah, I think conspiracy. I mean, I think I love conspiracies. I, I think they're fun. You know, I think some of my friends take it like seriously, but like I mean, and it can be you can be serious, but can, they're also they're also fun. They are. I, I like talking about China and what China's going to do because it's fun. Do I kind of believe it? A, a, a little bit. It's enough for me to go, you know, on air. And wave my hands and say, "I'm not running for office, but China's taking over." It's fun, <laughs> and that's when they, when they when they do the fact checking thing, like, "Hey, there's no evidence that I'm like, yeah, I don't care. It's fun. <laughs> Let me talk about China right now." And then and then when they when they censor us, say, "Hey, you can't talk." Now I'm thinking, "Well, I only partly believed it before, but now I really do believe it because you're telling me I can't talk about it. Now I do." And so, yeah, but no, but if you, if you can't believe in anything right now, it's going to get way worse with AI. It's going to be the doubt you'll have on media will exponentially go up. You won't believe in anything. Oh yeah. I mean, they've been doing that since Stalin days. I mean, Stalin would just like Photoshop you out of pictures before Photoshop was even a thing, you know, like, like if you fucked up, he just murdered you and like took you out of the picture. I mean, they've been doing that. They've been doing that for. They've been doing that forever. Now, now, just us peasants have access to it. You know what I mean? Like, who who knows how long? Like, they've had access to all that shit. You know, it's like 
and, and and who knows what i mean who knows how much of our history is fake too i mean it just seems like a bunch of people lying like make us dumb so we work in factories but now all the factories are gone so we have this like system to make us dumb for factories but no factories to work at <laughs> like, that's like what the world yeah, feels like yeah 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 exactly it's like what america feels like that it's like follow bell system and follow this lifestyle that doesn't exist anymore there, there, there's gonna be you're gonna be on phone calls with people with and you won't even know if, if it's the actual person on the other end of the phone that's crazy. And what if we're both this AI right now? What if we're both AI? Exactly. Really Dude, that, that you'll be doing live show. You'll be if you if you're doing a show in 20 years, you'll be bringing guests on. And then maybe 10 minutes in, you'll think, wait a minute, this isn't a real guy. <laughs> and like that would be like a that might be a legitimate problem. You'll be calling people, you'll be texting people, and they'll and the AI algorithms will get so bad they'll be able to hack into your friends' phones and then they'll play your your friend's voice recorded over and you won't even know if you're talking to your friend or not. It, it's going to get to that point. It's going to get there, man. Yeah. I wonder, I, I sometimes wonder, I saw this like Tom Hanks movie on like on, on Apple TV or whatever. He, he was like some like weird shit where he's just like him and a robot or on some planet or something. But like Tom Hanks looked like he was fake. He looked like he was already AI. I'm like, I'm like did they just use an AI Tom Hanks to make this like weird fucking lonely movie? It was just like a weird, like, like how many movies is he going to make where he's like the only dude and like his friend's like an inanimate object? Like, it's just fucking weird. It's like, what a weird, is it how he feels or something? I, I just like read into it too much on edibles. I'm like, I'm like, why does this guy just keep making the loneliest movies of all time? Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Like, oh, Tom Hanks. Yeah, he just does. He like, well, like, he's like on Mars with a robot and he's like on an island with a beach ball. It's yeah, just like, man, was, it's just well, like, it's, and it's like a trend I'm noticing. He was in another one where he's in an airport forever. Like what? What's that one called? Like, I, I, there's literally a Tom Hanks movie where he's alone for the entire movie, but in an air terminal. Terminal. There's, a, there's another Tom Hanks movie where he's alone again. It's just like it's just like I'm like, man, dude. Like, it's what a weird fucking like. It's like selfie the movie, you know? Just that, like, it's just fucking weird. That might be a bad. That that might Tom Hanks. I don't know if he's a money grubber. Or I don't know if that's public information, but I mean, it very it's very likely because I know how these things go with the production companies and, and making movies. But it might be the case that he asks. A guy like him now, he probably asks for so much money that these companies are like, well, you know what? We can only pay Tom, but let's try to make it anyway. Dude, that's so true. Though. Yeah, that's so real. He's like, he's probably you're, you're probably where he was like at like that and like the Turner and Hooch days, you know? Like, like, it was like Tom Hanks early movies, so that's probably where you're at right now. Like you're like young, that, but he's like he's like fifty or sixty. To where like he probably that dude's been like rich since the nineties, probably at least at least since the nineties, probably. So, I mean, any movie that guy makes, I mean, if you put Tom Hanks in a movie, I'll probably, I mean, most people probably watch it, include myself, you know, but it doesn't mean it's good. It just, but as anybody, if you just kept making movies all the time, you're going to make some bad shit, you know, you made so many movies, you're going to have to make some good shit, some bad shit, you know, like force Trump rules, you know. There's the way, yeah, I mean, it's the way it is. I mean, a lot of like, well, actors, like Louis C.K. kind of said this, he said, actors are like, like empty coffee cups. It's like, huh? we'll, we'll kind of do anything. We just want our cups to be filled, right? So they, they just, They'll, they'll do whatever, you know? And so act, actors, like, they, they get to a point in their career, they'll read the script and they'll be like, all right, this is this this is just terrible. Like, how much money am I making? And like this. And I, all right. And then they take it on as a challenge. They take the script on as a challenge. Like, all right, well, I'm going to try to make this movie good because you're paying me this much money. And then, you know, they don't make it good. And they're like, well, at least I made a lot of money. Like, That's hard. <laughs> No, that's a great way to look at it. I was like, what always annoys me is like these people like, like I can't believe you made that movie for like fifty million dollars. I'm like, I'm like, bro, you work at a gas station. You can't believe that guy did something for fifty million dollars. Like you show up to work for like seven bucks an hour. You know what I mean? Or whatever the fuck. Like, you can't believe he made something. He did something stupid for a bunch of money. It's just like it doesn't make any sense. It's like you do stupid shit for no money all the time. You just yeah. some, it just makes no, like they have some like kind of like like etiquette. Like I would never sell out. I'm like, you already sold out. You're just not even rich. <laughs> Yeah, never sell. Like, what do you mean by sell out, though? It's like yeah, it's a yeah, good job. You sell out. Yeah, it's like like you don't want to, like getting a job selling out. Like what a weird thing to say, you know? It's like does that getting, even exist anymore? Does selling out even exist anymore? It can't. Like getting a job in general is selling out. Like I mean, it is. Is, is selling out is like you're doing something you you don't want to do for money, and that's look, that's most people. That's everyone. That's everyone. That's probably that's everyone. It's like when you get like oh he's a like these guys, like my friends, like, dude, this guy's a sellout. 
And then like, yeah, I'm working at uh, at Dunkin' Donuts. It's like, well, I mean, you sold out too, dude. Yeah, just not, you're just not as good at selling out. It's like, like you yeah, know, it's, it's like, yeah, you sold out just like that guy. It's just the only thing that guy's making more money. He's, yeah, he's always, making more by selling out. It's just got to be jealousy, you know. It's like it's like, you're like fuck that guy. I should be a millionaire. It's like we well, didn't work for it. You didn't do the fucking work, you know. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, yeah. I mean, com- and then comics are like the worst about that. I mean. Oh yeah. Now you're in a good city. Though. Chicago is more fun to do comedy, probably. You guys just do like a bunch of mics a night. Is it still like that? Are you guys just do like five mics a night or some shit like like, like that? You just like Uber around doing that shit. Not not that many, but like I mean, you can get up every night. I mean, um, the city. It's like you can get up if you know everyone. You can get up like three times in a night. So it seems like a bad. But like that's that's if you like know people. Like there's lotto spot mics. It's like. You know, like, oh, I'm doing this mic, but it's a lotto spot. I hope I get in. And they know the guy, and they just put, you know. So if you know everyone that does all the mics, then, yeah, you can you can get up probably, like, three times a night. But most of them are, like, terrible mics. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's, uh, I, I'm, <laughs> all the comics are good in major cities. Like, like Chicago and Seattle are kind of the same where they have, like, really good comics. But, like, none of them have, like, like none of them are, like, blowing up. They're, like, perfecting their art almost there. And then they go somewhere else and kill it. That's usually what, happen- what I usually see these guys do. A lot of and guys, man. I mean... Uh, yeah, I know a couple guys who in Chicago, like Luca Farrow's a guy I know. Um, Chicago guy just moved to New York, and now he's going to, you know, try to make it in New York. Like, Chicago's a – it's a great developing scene. Like, because, like, the stage time out there is pretty quality stage time. And it's also, like, a mix of, like, the L.A. and the New York style. You know, it's yeah, Midwest. I- it's like – I think starting out in the Midwest is, is good. I do too. In Chicago, because like it, it's like a blend kind of, and then so Chicago, you're gonna get all the different flavors. You can go do the Wisconsin market. the The market you do in Wisconsin or northern suburbs is a totally different market than you know in the city. Yeah, the city almost sucks to comedy, and all the markets are around it. Like, the cities are good to get get good in though. Usually, like you you hit all those places. I mean, you get second city and you know, like all those like clubs and stuff like like uh, like I, I'm blanking on them right now, but all those like bigger clubs and stuff you do out there. But like I mean, the suburbs in, of Chicago, where's the money's at? In my opinion, that's where all the money's at. If, if you if you if you could hit all those like fucking like weird ass bars and shit, that's where all the money's at. Like I mean, just, I mean not like tilted kilts and shit, man. You know, like whatever whatever kind of like just bars like that. If you hit that shit up, I mean, that's where all the money. All the money is in the suburbs. It seems like in St. Louis and Chicago, it seems like that both. Like, yeah, the suburbs also. It's like I don't know. They have a thing where maybe there's less artists in the suburbs. Because when yeah. you do a show for a suburban venue, they're like, oh, you're going to do a comedy show? Oh, that's awesome. You do in the city, they're like, oh, yeah, we've already had 10 comedy shows here. So, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll give you that. We'll pay you guys an exposure. It'll yeah, well, exposure, you know. It is weird. Yeah, I know. It is weird. Like, when I, when I shows out the way, I forgot the name of the town. It's, I haven't done shows in your area in like since like 2017, probably. So I don't, I don't know the names of anything. But, but like, to be honest, like, I could, I could bullshit, but I don't know it. But no, there's a couple places that were like, yeah, ain't, the only ones I did in the city were like kind of bullshit shows. But then the suburb ones were kind of packed. But that may, may be kind of artist I am too. I'm not like a, you know, I mean, it may be the kind of person I am, the kind of people I attract to. You know, so I mean, to be honest, I mean, I'm not really like, I mean, I, I may live in the city, but the city people don't really like <coughs> like me that much, you know. So it, I, I grew up in the suburbs. I don't know. I think suburbs are easier out there. I think that's a better market. I don't know why. I do think that though. It really is. It really is like the only thing about the city is like. There's just more networking. Yeah, you'll so find like, better comics out there, you'll, but but then like the fans are better in the suburbs. That's what I f- that's what it feels like. Yeah, kind of. I mean, obviously you do Zany oh, Chicago. Cool. Zany Chicago is phenomenal. That's in the city, so yeah, it's one thing if you're doing a club. But like, yeah, a lot of like the alt shows, all the best ones are like in the burbs. Really, I mean, they'll pay you more money. Like they're more worthwhile yeah. doing. The public give you more time. You do the city. It's like. Yeah, if you're micing all the time in the city, you can book out, you know, thirty shows a month, and you can post your calendar. Oh, look all the shows! But and they pay you like five bucks, if that. Sometimes they don't even pay you. They go, oh, yeah. well, exposure. What the hell is exposure? If I want exposure, I'll I'll, I'll go shake my ass on TikTok. I don't need exposure <laughs> at at this this you know goth emo bar. In, Where nobody's at. Yeah, in, nobody Rick, in Wrigleyville, I don't need exposure at a ten person show in Wrigleyville. So it's like. City's just kind of weird for that. Um, so yeah, it's, anyway, it's good networking, and then you'll you'll be meeting people who are gonna, you know, kind of make it. 
And so there's that, so many good comics out there. I know there's so many good ones. I, I like I said, I haven't been involved in years out there, but I, uh, back when I was back when I was out there, there's a lot of good guys out there, man. Like, there are a lot, of, and same with Seattle. Seattle's like that too. It seems like I mean they're all liberals, uh, but but they're funny guys and shit. I don't mean anything bad by that, but I just mean like they're just. They're funny, but they just don't understand the policy or anything. <laughs> like they don't understand, like they understand like comedy and art and stuff. But they don't like. It's just like I don't know. Like, like it surprises you how smart somebody could be at like one thing and then not at another. It's like kind of weird. Oh, you see, they're all they all like political stuff in Seattle, or yeah, just like they're like satanic liberals, but which is kind of weird to me. But but you I mean but, but it's like they're funny as fuck. I mean they're they're all good guys and they're funny. It's just like I just like. We both like clash like politically and ideology wise, but I mean it doesn't matter. Like we still do shows and stuff. I, I, I guess I, that's that's it's very similar market to your market. I think where the comedians in the city are so funny, it's just like they need to hit the suburbs and take all that money. You know, that's I, that's same as same in Seattle, Washington, Tacoma, all that stuff out there. And then you hit all those. It's, that's what you see a lot of. I mean, but that's I mean it's a great grounds to get good though. I think, man. I think doing I think being in Chicago and being in those cities like New York, Seattle, LA, and stuff like that, it's a good way to get really good. And then like, and then you go somewhere else, you just kill it. You know I mean? It's like you're saying those TikTok guys don't do shows. So it's like the opposite of that. It's like, you get really good at doing shows. So then you just like, anywhere you go, you're just going to kill it. You know, it's like, I think that's, that's the move really. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I, I don't know. Yeah. Largely. I mean, you do have to do the, the, I think you get best by doing the road, doing all the markets and, and learning what makes everyone laugh, you know, and, and stand yeah, up. I mean, so like, yeah, I mean, what you do in the city, like some comics in the city, like they only do the city. I mean, most of them, most city comics only do the city. And yeah. then they go, to the, they go to the burbs. And like, just like the references, like these suburbs people, they don't, they don't get that many things, really. Like, they, they get like, like even the stuff we talked about today on this show. Like people that listen to internet shows, podcast, they're kind of with it. Suburbs people are not really with it. Like you have to be very careful if you're a celebrity references. Like, if you throw in a Charlie D'Amelio reference at a suburb show, you better be careful. Oh, right? that's a good point. No, that's a good point. Okay, I didn't think about that. Yeah, not so, uh, yeah, you're just saying. Right. So it's like it's like you jump like there's oh wait, and I was doing this, you know, like Addison Ray, you know, if you do a joke with Addison Ray, the suburbs people are like, Who's that? It's like Yeah, you need like you need ninety celebrities, nostalgic stuff. You need like you need like you need like Nickelback, Full House, shit like that. You need you need you need like fucking like obvious like nostalgic shit because they're working all the time, man. Those guys are working like sixty hour weeks and they don't watch shit, you know. Except yeah. like maybe Fox or something, you know, or maybe some CNN, and maybe whatever the fuck they whatever their brand is, you know. Yeah, like TV, yeah, you know, like, like Angelina Jolie, like oh I know who that is, like oh I know who Brad Pitt is, but then you're like, yeah, freaking uh, Lil Xan. <laughs> Lil Xan. Only people your age know fucking Little Xan. Like, like I, I'm, a, I'm like 37, and none of my friends know who the fuck Little Xan is. If, if, if I was to ask, go around asking, like if I wasn't in media, I'd have no idea who the fuck he was. You know what I mean? Like, like, like you know, do you know? You were in St. Louis a little bit. Do you know Vlad HQ? You know this rapper from up here? Vlad HQ. Uh... He might be a little older than you. He's like, uh, he he scared Little Xan from playing the pageant out here. Like he he made some video like shooting like the, the lake, saying talking about he's like Little Xan, you better not come to St. Louis and like shoots like the lake with some guns. He canceled his pageant show, and, and I, 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 because he was like scared of this like kid that I've had I had him on the pod, I had him on the podcast too. Like he was like he scared Little Xan out of doing a show in St. Louis. <laughs> Holy shit! You know this kid. Well, I mean, vague. I mean, not, not like no, no. But I mean, he's been on the show before. Yeah, I, I don't. You I mean I got like, you know, I got like a network of like fifteen people I actually fucking know. Everybody else is just like, you know, an acquaintance or something. So he's, wow. more, he's, more, he's more of an acquaintance, you know. But and he made Little Zan not, not do a show. Wow. And his crime, yeah. I think I think he bought a feature from Little Zan. Little Zan didn't give him the feature, and he like threatened him on the internet, and then. Scared him out of his St. Louis show in his prime too. He probably would have made like fucking ten, twenty thousand dollars because he was like that was like the beginning of like when people fucking went to Los Angeles shows still like all those kids before they grew up and stopped doing drugs. Dude, yeah, yeah that he just co he cost St. Louis a, a chunk of change. He's costing the local economy some money by doing that. Honestly, yeah. honestly though, yeah, no. So what what brought you to St. What what are you from Chicago region? What brought you to St. Louis? Oh, dude, so. That's a very good question, and I still don't know the answer to. I, I was in, so I'm in St. Charles, which is a suburb of, of Chicago. Oh, okay. It's like, it's like an hour and a half from the city. So when I do Zanies, sometimes it's like a pretty long drive, you know, whatever. But um, 
So my thinking was, you know, I had to pick a school because I, I graduated from ECC, you know, community college in Elgin. And then uh, I'm thinking, all right, I got to pick a four year, get my bachelor's. I'm thinking, where am I going to go? You know, and I saw SIUE had like pretty cheap, like in-state tuition. And I heard they had a good like psychology program. I'm like, all right. And then I saw they were really close to St. Louis, which is a city. I'm thinking, well, this might be perfect because like maybe I'll be able to do even more comedy by going to this school because it's so close to a city. It's like if I want to go to the city right now, I have to drive an hour and a half. Where this is, you know, from Southern Illinois, Edwardsville, it was only a half hour drive. Yeah. I thought, yeah, this might be a good thing to do. You know, a couple of years, I'll, I'll go here. And I might be able, to, I'll probably be able to do, you know, get more stage time than I am right now. You know, I'll, so I'll do St. Louis for a little bit. And then I went down there and like, <laughs> look, dude, I I like St. Louis a little bit. I like the comics there. I got a lot of all the comics. I love the comics. The comics are great. Some of the funniest comics. Dude, you got like one mic a night. If you're lucky, you had Kusumanos. The, that was the best mic on Wednesday. I agree. That was the that only was, one I even did. That's the only one I even did. The rest of them were like gate kept by like retards. They're, they never did anything. They're like, well, you can't do it today because like my mom said no. You know, it's like some weird. It was like some weird shit. Kusumanos was like the opposite. You could you could smoke weed inside. You could fucking do whatever. It's like I, I, I love that place. Like 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 this thing about St. Louis. Like I, I didn't even hear about the other places. That was the only place that you really could do. In all of St. Louis, this is a real city. Yeah. The only open mic you could do as a comic in St. Louis was an abandoned pizza shop. That was the only place you can do comedy in the whole city yeah. of St. Louis. And so I, it's like I did 20 states this year and I'll probably never do St. Louis again. I live yeah. here. I, I love living here. I just hate doing shows here. Like like the last show I did in St. Louis was like was in like was in the ghetto. And I just made fun of it the whole time. And like, I'm like, I'm never doing this again. And then people were like, I'm, I'm like, I don't want to be here. This sucks. This is disgusting. And then people were like, dude, that was a really good bit where you like, you said you didn't ever want to play this fucking city again. That was really good. And I'm like, everyone's retarded. I got to go. You know, I'm just, I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. I'm like, people are like, I'm literally bombing, telling everybody how much this sucks. And they're like, good job, dude. That was like, that bit was like really good. How you like, you said you hate this entire town. How you never do a show here again. And I'm like, I just can't do, I just, I mean, I just can't do. There's no money here, man. Nobody's got fucking money. For <laughs> nobody's got merch. Nobody's got. None of these clubs want to fucking pay you. And if they do, you got to bring a PA. Like I'm a fucking band or something. <laughs> like, you mean, like, hey, can you bring a PA and, a, and this? I'm like, I'm not a fucking DJ. I'm not gonna bring equipment. I'm just gonna talk <laughs> into a microphone. You know, and it's like, and like, like St. Louis has no scene basically at all as far as comedy goes. And like, but I do love, I do love living here. I love its co low cost of living. I love Missouri. I'm not gonna act like I don't. But I do, um, yeah, no, I, I see how a comedian would not want to do comedy here ever. And that's, like, how I feel. That's, like, how, I mean, I, like I said, I, I did 20 states, and, like, I just, and I do a lot of Missouri. I like the Lick those Ozarks. I like the Cape Girardeau. I like, um, I like a lot of areas that aren't St. Louis, you know. It's, like, uh, there's a lot of good markets here. I mean, Lake, Lake the Ozarks is the best market in my opinion. I love, best Missouri market. Like, it's just a bunch of people want to party and get trashed. Like, I love it. That's good. Like, white trash Hollywood, man. I love it. There you go. Well, yeah, St. St. Louis, like. I don't know. There just didn't seem to be enough like stage time out there, and like no crowds. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, there's no crowds. Yeah, I mean nobody wants to go to an open mic. I mean, okay, imagine if you're not doing comedy and you tell somebody about an open mic, they're like, "That's gay." Like, I mean, you mean like, 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 hey, dude, you want to go see me like work for free? And like, no, no one wants to see you <laughs> fucking work. For, you know, that's just. I mean, think, I mean, you gotta think from a consumer standpoint. Like, you, you, no one wants to fucking see that shit. You know what I mean so it's just like. It's, it's you're just playing in front of like four other dudes who don't know how to market themselves. You know I mean, <laughs> like basically in, in this town anyway, and your town's a little different, I think. Like, I think there's a, a bunch of guys that have shit going on and like a bunch of guys that don't, but like it's all mixed together. I mean, and I'm not trying to, I, like I said, I love living here, man. And I love like the creative people and like music and like other things. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I don't think the, the, the talent's not properly represented here. Maybe that's the problem because there's a lot of good talent, but they're held back by complete dorks. Like we're like we're from time said like the best podcast like shit to like more people six hundred fifty five people are watching right now more people are watching this show right now than have ever heard of those other shows ever and basically <laughs> and, and like they get the best show in St Louis it makes no sense to me they have no famous people they have no porn stars they have no they have nothing going on whatsoever 
but they have the, like different times. Like, here's the best podcast. Sometimes they interview local bands, and I'm just yeah. like, they don't properly represent the talent, man. There's a lot of talented pe- people here that are overlooked through politics or through, and, and I don't just mean like political, like just like social politics. Like they, like they don't like the person. If you don't like the person, you're not booking them. It's like, dude, it doesn't matter. Business, you you don't only work with people you like. That's retarded. You know what I mean? It's like, like only, you mean, I, like, I like 15 people. That means I can only work with my friends. Yeah, that's, that's just ridiculous. I mean, you have to work with everybody. And I think that's a big thing that like they're missing. And I think that that stunts their growth a lot of times. Yeah. So I think yeah. Well, you know, people in Chicago get that. I mean, they understand they need a network. I mean, the comics in Chicago are just like, I mean, they're pretty ruthless when it comes to, they all want to be famous, which is like, sometimes it gets a little, you know, cringe at times, but, it, but sometimes it's like, Hey, yeah, they're getting it done. They're networking. They're doing all these shows and they're getting me on their shows. And, you know, it's competitive. Like you can sense there's a competitive energy and they're all shitting on each other behind their backs, but Hey, at least they're trying to do things, you know, it's, yeah. and it's, it's a lot of them. It's a lot of that. So yeah, Chicago, you, there's a, there, there is more opportunity there. I mean, that that's kind of how I, I mean, that's how I got the movie was uh was doing some in Chicago because the, the director was, was a Chicago guy. That makes sense. Yeah, they're all out there. And that's what Lauren Michaels does, man. He swoops all you guys. I mean, I mean from Second City, he's been doing that for I mean there's been guys doing that for decades out there, man. I mean that's a good town to be in and stuff. And like like I mean with the internet you can do whatever too. I mean, but it's like if you're out in person you're gonna you're gonna vibe and meet more people in a city like that. It's not my style, but it's like I mean it's a style and it doesn't necessarily have to be my style. It's like as long as it works. You know what I mean? It seems like it's working. So it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. It's like I, I I love Missouri. I love I love being in a state nobody knows fucking anything about. You know, I love I love that aspect. It's a it's a huge advantage. I feel like just being in a in a from an area nobody knows anything about. You know. Well, dude, I I would think like an audience would like that because every YouTuber, internet like celebrity is like this this LA guy. Like, oh, I I moved. I'm in LA and I'm doing auditions every day. Sometimes it's refreshing to to, to see a guy. It's like, yeah, I'm in St. Louis. I'm in Missouri, and I'm doing my show in Missouri because I like my state, and I'm going to do it here. I'm going to do it. And they're like, wait, so he's not trying to do this thing? He's not trying to get with as in, you know, whatever whatever in L.A.? Like, he's not trying to yeah. get on SNL in New York? This is just some normal guy doing a show? I think people like that. It's kind of refreshing, you know? Yeah, I think I'm one of the few people who didn't push the vaccine a million times too. I think, I think that was. You know, I think that lost a lot of people like Jimmy Kimmel and stuff. Like all they did is like, like they could be very talented writers, but but the, but uh, they just complained about Trump for like a decade and they like, pushed the vaccine. And everybody, everybody's like, man, that's just like even if I even if they didn't like Trump, it's still annoying though. Like I mean, it's just it's just like this weird like status quo thing where I mean they they basically handed it to us, man. Like I, I mean, our generation. I mean, they kind of just. I mean, we're in different generations, probably. But I think I think they just handed us this. But like every like, I, it just seems like it's for the taking right now, you know. And it hasn't been in a while, you know. Yeah, they do all kind of have like the same. They're kind of doing like the same thing, which like so. Then there's like there's a market for the alt guys because like, hey, we have something else. You know? Yeah, just weird guests on here. I mean, we have so many. I mean, just today. I mean, we had we had a comment. I mean, you from Chicago, and another you from New York. I mean, that's just like a with three major cities just on one podcast. I mean, that's that's a that's just a crazy thing with what podcasting could do that like nothing else can somehow. You know, it's like a weird. It's a weird. It's like a. It's like way cooler than radio. You know, like radio is so limited. Yeah, there needs to be a video. Like I think, it, like I want to see the the person. I know. Uh, I like seeing the guy talk. I like seeing someone talk, you know. Yeah, I mean, at least it's an option. So the people that don't can listen to an audio, too. I mean, it's just like, you know I mean? So it's like, and there's options. So, I mean, it's good. And, like, who knows where the world's going. But, I mean, I mean, a lot of entertainment's still going to be good. And, like, I mean, I think with Hollywood, like, the writer's strike gave us all, it basically handed us all shit, you know. It, I mean, he's like, my buddy sent me a script the day they announced the writer's strike. Like, he literally sent me a script. It was, like, in, like, it was, like, I had a news clip on my phone, like, saying there's a writer strike, and then an email on my phone notification from my buddy who sent me this, like, the strip club thing we're working on. And, like, it's, like, so funny just seeing how we're, and, like, Missouri with the tax credit now. Like, I mean, they have a huge tax credit now here, too. I mean, it's just, like, you're going to see more stuff out of that. And, like, I mean, and, like, no, I mean, that's, like, uh, I, I think it's the move, you know. Before I had to go, I, I, I've been in a couple of shitty things, but, but you had to go to Vancouver for it, you know. You couldn't just shoot it. I mean, Chicago shoots a couple. Was your movie shot in Chicago? Oh, I'm sorry, you just broke up there. What do you say? Was your movie shot in Chicago? Oh uh, yeah, we shot mostly in Chicago. Um, smart, Chicago okay. area. No, it's smart. Yeah, because you had like Chicago PD and a couple other things shot. You had like three or four things shot shoot up there, I think. But that's like, I mean, that's 
That's a good thing, man. Yeah, direct, you said the director was from there. That's smart. Yeah, yeah, they got a lot of stuff in Chicago. I mean, so but you, you just reminded me. I gotta, I gotta start, you know, finding uh, like an agent now because uh, uh, the actor's strike is over now. Um, so I gotta get on that. That's a whole thing. So, yeah, no, Chicago. Like, I will. I've almost thought about just staying here for a while, just because like there is, like there's a lot of stuff here already. Well, you're like in the middle of like everything, and there's like work. I mean, so if you need to go to New York or LA, it's right. That's the same thing I like about St. Louis. Kind of is like, if you need to go somewhere, you go. I mean, you can go anywhere, you know. Or for, or what do you say about St. Louis? I mean, it's just it's just kind of in the middle, is why I like it. Same with like Chicago. I like that it's in the middle of like everything, and like, um, I mean, so if you need to go somewhere, I mean, you need to go to like the West Coast, you fly there, and you go to the East Coast, you fly there, you know. That is nice. That is nice. You can just yeah, New York and LA, is, they're both you know. Pretty pretty close. That is nice. Is yeah. my camera messing up? Anyway. Yeah. Messing up. Or, uh, camera is up it Florida? Anywhere, really. I mean, just anywhere. You're in the middle of everything, man. It's like, my camera's all fucked up, dude. Can you hear me? You still there? Oh, fuck. Hang on. Looks like it's just me now. Hello? Oh, okay, there he is. He's back again. Hey, sorry. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? <laughs> Can you not hear me? I don't know what's going on. I can hear on my screen. I can't hear him now. Can you muted? I don't think so. What's going on? This is live. Six hundred people. It's like, my how's it? Computer? What happened? You can hear me though. Well, uh, thank you for watching. If you can hear this, um, something's going on with this. Um, we'll probably have him back on or something like that at some point. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, and uh, do your thing. Yeah, go back to whatever you're doing. Um, check out next week what we're doing. Uh, also, after the holiday, we're going to be going every day. So um, check that out, too.